this is Voyager time. I got everything I need. A limitless supply of mayonnaise, this captivating new hairstyle, and I enjoyed studying anatomy. I'm Andrew, and with me today is... Sarah. Ben. And a newly found sounding Nathan. A very smooth voiced Nathan. <laughs> we figured it out, folks. We figured it out. It's solved. You sound great. Thank you. Today, we're talking about Voyager episode 6 on Netflix, Eye of the Needle. A micro wormhole is discovered that leads to the Alpha Quadrant, and the crew make contact with a Romulan ship on the other side. The Voyager so far has fired two of its 38 photon torpedoes. We're also talking about Adventure Time episode 11, Wizard. Finn and Jake are coaxed by a skeleton man to enroll in a course for free magic powers. After becoming full-fledged wizards, they realize they were tricked into helping stop an asteroid for all of eternity. Finn rejects the status quo and thinks of a different way to avert the crisis. And episode 12, Evicted. Finn and Jake search the land of Ooh for a new home after a vampire queen named Marceline, voiced by Olivia Olsen, claims the duo's treehouse as her own. Eventually, Marceline relents because she thinks Finn and Jake are, quote, cool. To be fair, she only thought Finn was cool in that episode. Yeah. She tried to eat Jake. Save it. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm being podcast dad. We're not there yet. Uh-oh. Pod okay. dad. Pod dad's putting his foot down. Uh, so both Nate and I failed on our guest this week. Uh-huh. What did you think it was? Uh, we both thought you were going to use the I've become accustomed to being treated like a uh, hypo spray from the doctor. <laughs> so my quote was going to be I've become accustomed to being treated like no one can understand us. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Mine was similar. It was, I've become accustomed to being treated like I moved all my blood and guts over to my thumb. <laughs> I also thought Nate's was one. way better. No, I, I thought that all of Kess's dialogue at the beginning was like full of double entendres, and so I thought I was going to do something with that. That's fair. Before we get into that, um, I got really curious about star dates, because they come up at the beginning of every episode, and they're all different. So um, it, apparently in the um, the Star Trek series Bible, it says, pick any combination of four numbers plus percentage point and use it as your story star date. And that's it. That they just It's a random number every time. <laughs> that checks out. So we can't like, you know, backtrack episodes to like actually calculate the the actual time that has taken place between. The only specification for that is that every percentage point is roughly equivalent to one tenth of a day. So it's like thirteen point one four point five or thirteen one four point five is like noon on a given day. Hmm. Mm. But they have the same like starting numbers. Like it does go in an order. I think they may have gotten a little more sequential and um purposeful with them later like when the by the time they got to Deep Space Nine in Voyager. Yeah. I do well, know. They, I think they started that in Next Generation, but I yeah. feel like the '60s show seems like that's the one where they'd be like, "Just make it whatever you want." <laughs> so start date eleven. So, so do you think that the the star date was in the script then, or was it an ad hoc every time? <laughs> oh, I hope it was an ad hoc. I <laughs> That'd be really so. great <laughs> if, like, the entire universe of Star Trek was just predicated on the fact that, like. Uh, William Shatner just made up a number uh-huh. at the beginning of each episode, and they're like, "All right." I mean, that's so we're how going. important he thinks he is. So yeah, that checks out. <laughs> that right. would make sense. Uh, I thought this was a good episode. I I like this one a lot. Yeah, I did too. I was concerned in the beginning because it had kind of yeah. a slow burn where it did feel like another episode that was just going to be all techno babble. Yep. Until it yeah. actually like took off, but it was it felt like the first fifteen minutes of it was like, okay, is this going to be the rest of the episode? Yeah. So this episode opens with them finding that t- uh, a tiny wormhole and getting curious about it. So they stick a probe in there and it gets stuck inside. Um, and then they talk for ten, fifteen minutes just about wormholes. And I know, I know. <laughs> uh, the wormhole uh, discovered by Harry Kim, which leads me to a quick detour to the shipping department. Yes. I was gonna, I was um, gonna bring us right there too. Like out of nowhere, Tom Paris was like, "I think that we should name this wormhole after Harry Kim." He wants to name a star uh, after like, Harry. It's exactly that. It's, it's exactly like his only that. line in this episode too. He shows up just to continue to profess his love. I'm totally on board this ship, by the way. 
Oh yeah, it's Professor's love I'm glad for Harry that, Kim. I'm, I'm glad that you led us there right off the bat too, because I was I, I was a, mm. about a cu- couple seconds behind you there. <laughs> yeah, it was like the first thing that happened in the episode that I was like really paying attention to, and I was like, okay, all right. Yeah, my note just says Paris loves Kim. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> he does. I mean, he yeah. does. I didn't write they anything do. down about that, so I'm proud of you guys for. Uh, for finding Con- contributing to the shipping department finding the ship uh-huh. I-, I am it- proud that nate and andrew are on board now <laughs> it was this moment that ma- that totally turned me because there's no reason for him to call it that right. except if he really wants to impress this cute boy who just sits a couple seats away from him on the <laughs> voyager bus it was the equivalent of like passing a note back a couple desks with the you no know, the, do, do you no, like no, no, no. Yes. the equivalent is, of passing is, a notice what tuvok and kim did last episode with their communicators on the bridge oh absolutely <laughs> no this is this is paris turning around and looking dreamily at the boy behind him. <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. and then getting up in front of the class to say how good of a job Harry did. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing i did pull out from all the techno babble was um they referred to talking about dense eddies, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> yeah, good band name. Dense Eddie. <laughs> dense Eddie in the wormholes. It's going to be my new cover band. I wish that when this episode had opened, they had there was a little more description of how significant the course change was and how it was going to impact them. Mm-hmm. It, it was just, it seemed like a random number at first. I was like, all right, I don't see how this is really affecting what they're doing yet. To- did they even mention a number? I thought they just said it was going to be a significant change in course. I don't. I think they said a number, but like we didn't have an idea of like how far out of the way that would take them. Really? Yeah, but enough to make them talk about it as a consideration. Yeah, because I think like any time they're taking themselves off the path to the Alpha Quadrant is time. Because they have 75 years to go without anything boosting right. them. Because they don't have anything like that happening to the yet, yet. So Spoilers. Well, <laughs> this is an episode that basically sh- like foreshadows that they could potentially find stuff that can do that for them. And like they're yeah, still no. looking for the other caretaker that's trying to... They're going to try and get that person... Oh my god, I forgot about that mm-hmm. one. ...to teleport them back. So like that's still their goal. But like they don't have any... They haven't found anything like that. So that's why they were like... It was worth it to them for them to go and find this wormhole, and then also, it does. If it doesn't work out, then they wasted a bunch of time, mm-hmm. and who knows how long that is. They didn't say, obviously, but right. That's what I wanted to know. So, like, that was a big deal in Interstellar. There was that one planet that was like so close to the black hole, like a thousand years past for every minute up or whatever it was. You know, uh, it's been super memed, but it like in the movie it had an enormous amount of weight and stakes to it because you knew like if this one didn't pan out. It was gonna be. It was gonna set them back so long, and so for this one to yeah. not have any any stakes to it, any weight to it, it was just like we're gonna have to go out of our way. But we don't have any. Like it had no impact on their broader mission. I I just wish there had been a little bit more there. Yeah, because there's a big difference between them being set behind, like a year or two in mm-hmm. this case, right. or like a week. You know, a but- week over seventy five years. Uh, nothing, right. really. yeah. who, who gives a shit at that point but like another two years would make us at least a semi-significant difference mm-hmm. right I, I just wish there had been a little just even a, a tiny bit more about that explaining what was going on and i'm mm-hmm. beginning to realize that uh we're not going to get a whole lot of that survivalist stuff in this mm-hmm. show it's just always going to be those little explanations at the beginning it, like yeah yeah so I'll stop complaining about it quite so much. But in this one, it really stuck out to me because they made such a big deal out of it and then it amounted to very little. Yeah, I think it's it's mostly just kind of how they're using it. It's just kind of that stage setting for like, hey, you know, we're still like, <laughs> this is the focus of what this series is about is getting back home. Hey, we miss home. You know, just kind of setting that frame every episode more right. than it amounting to significant stakes. And they did a good job with that in this episode, too. Later, when they're talking to the Romulan, uh, they they sort of set up. The, I mean, you just, the thing is, you only ever get those little touches of how it's impacting them emotionally. And I just want more of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also not far as far into the show. Like, it's only those six episodes. Right. <laughs> so, I mean. Yeah. 
I mean, they, but the, I do agree that they've been saying a lot of stuff like the crew's getting really lonely and sad without any their families. They can't talk to their families. Like we only have each other. Blah blah mm-hmm. blah. But we only get that from like Janeway's log at the beginning, where she's like talking about how she's like noticed stuff like that or whatever. Right, right. Like I would, I would rather see that evidence of that. And I think that if the show was coming out now, they probably would do more to show that instead of just have her tell everyone that that's what's going on. And you have to just like accept that that is right. what you're going to get. But yeah, it's the classic writers thing. It's, it's you want them to show, not tell. And so right. far it's just been a lot of telling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was just thinking. I mean, we, we do get it a little bit from like Harry Kim later on when he's talking about how much he's, worried about his parents missing him yeah, yeah. but we like, had the back and forth with balana and trying to like figure out you know who who she has back home and all that that yeah. conversation and she's yeah. like all my friends are here so right. i'm fine <laughs> i'm good okay. actually yeah that was a really interesting insight into her character mm-hmm. uh, it, yeah it explained a lot about her i felt like did anyone else get vague Red Dawn vibes from that scene where balana's trying to dial in the frequency filter and everything like that mm-hmm I haven't seen that. Me neither. There's this moment where uh, 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 this one poor crew member who can't be older than 16 is trying to rebuild the radio as fast as he can. And like in the movie, the stakes are super high and it's like super high pressure and everything like that. I just mm-hmm. think I, I got that moment from this. I <laughs> was convinced that we were going to lose our first red shirt, that they were going to oh, try to transport been great. someone and they would have been like lost in the wormhole mid transport or something like Ooh. that. Yeah, I figured it was going to be something where transportation was going to be too dangerous. And so that's how people, well, that's the reason it was not going to work. Because, I mean, like, they would, they had this idea and then I was like, uh, they can't make that work. There's a lot more of this show to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, nope, I that's mean, it. That's... This is the last episode of the series. They yeah, that, that would <laughs> be such thing... a power play. <laughs> when they find out things like this. At any point in the show, because I know how long the show lasts. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, and I guess I would have thought this when, if I was watching it when it was new, too, because it's like, mm-hmm. this is only the sixth episode of right. this Star Trek show. Like, yeah. obviously, they're not going to get back to the Alpha Quadrant. Like, so I was just like waiting for how it was going to go wrong. Yeah, it's a real mm-hmm. Gilligan's Island situation where it's like, okay, they're going <laughs> to like come up with these ideas on a regular basis. But yeah, none of them can pan out for the sake of like... Right having a show continue. Right. Yeah. So that's what killed the transporter part for me later. But I thought that mm-hmm. they wound up making it a fairly compelling episode of mm-hmm. the show anyway, despite that. Just by, Oh, yeah. Like, through... Like, this whole time, they have to build this relationship with this one guy who's, like, you know, classic Romulan, pretty skeptical. Like, I don't really get what their whole vibe is with humanity. They just, like, they just don't like them that much, I guess. Um They've been at war for, like, forever. Okay. <laughs> like, there's... The Romulans are one of the big bads from mm-hmm. all of it. Yeah. Are they the just... Romulan, by the way, looked so weird. He was so square. Um, he was yeah. just a big old square. I, he looked... He looked like an action figure be, just being placed on, the, <laughs> yeah. on that thing at first. That's what they like, look like. Uh-huh. I believe it. Still looks weird. <laughs> It's okay, great, I am. One I like the... I like weird looking alien people. It's fun. What do you think his baby looks like? Oh, it's very God. square. <laughs> a baby with little pointy ears and like the the angry forehead and very uh-huh. fierce forehead. So this is going to be a dumb question because my Star Trek history slash lore is fairly limited. Yes, do they're they related have, to sister species. Do they have? Do Romulans have any relation to Vulcans, or do they just yes. look similar to? No, they okay. do. Okay, I figured that. What had did to I just be, say? Nate? I had. I figured that had to be the case, just <laughs> based on the, you know, how they the ears. I mean, no, just like how they designed the the characters. I mean, I guess. Like, yeah, makes sense. Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, my memory is that. Um, when the Vulcans, so like there was a big civil war and the Vulcans decided that the right way to prevent that from happening in the future was to give up all emotion. And the Romulans who were, they were the same species this time were like, eh, no, I don't think so. And they noped out to a different planet and then their evolution diverged. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Something like yeah. that. 
And then there, I mean, there was a whole storyline in Next Generation where Spock was on Romulus and they were like working for reunification, mm. like to bring the two peoples back together, which made it sound like the way that they wanted to get back together was to have the Romulans become like the Vulcans and not any type of compromise. But yeah, of I, course. Mean, huh. I just wanted to say that I thought when they were like, there's a ship over there. I'm like, of course it's not going to be a fucking like Starfleet. It's not going to be right. some ally. It's going to be no. like an angry bitchy Klingon or it's going to be a Romulan. <laughs> like those right. are the only two that it would have been. And of course, but in the end he ended up being a nice Romulan, like yeah. the only nice Romulan. Cause he was a scientist and he was like curious, more curious about the situation and these people who are in need than he was loyal to the, feud yeah. that they've been having for years right. and years. Well, and there was just that huge moment for Janeway and her working that diplomacy with that Romulan scientist to... And this is after they established the video link. Yeah, yeah. Where she was, uh, uh, you know, appealing to his humanity essentially about, you know... Romulanity like, is my note. Huh? Right. <laughs> Romulanity. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, talking about being in that similar scenario of like him being in space for his entire child's life at this point, um, you know, and them being nowhere near home at this point. So kind of building on that quote unquote relationship they just built with this yeah. random scientist they came in contact with the two. Yeah. So good. Yeah. That whole moment was really, really good. The Romulan bringing up the fact that he had missed his, like the birth of his daughter uh actually hit a little closer to home than you might hit think for me because my dad he he didn't miss mine but he did miss my sister's birth mm. because of being deployed in the navy mm. and then he missed my other sister's first birthday also because yeah. of so a red dawn missed. scenario yep definitely red dawn scenario <laughs> no because he was uh i mean he was being deployed in uh the pacific or somewhere in the Mediterranean and he was away for yeah. like a I, year at a time almost. I just, so. ugh, I cannot fathom like that. No, that hit really hard for me being that those are, you know, kind of threads the needle between my two kids ages right now and thinking like I would not have met our youngest at this point. Yeah. It's yeah. wild to me. I really enjoyed that bit. It's been my favorite Janeway conducts diplomacy bit so far. Like the bit with the the Vidians, where she talked about like Vidians. Uh, <laughs> Get it right, Andrew. <laughs> Vidians. Uh, I heard Medians there. I need you to make another run at it. The one where they went to Medea's house. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. It's a Tyler Perry movie now. Great. <laughs> Tyler Perry is in a Star Trek movie. That's right. Isn't he a Vulcan? Holy shit. What? No, he's an admiral at Starfleet Academy. Oh, that's Academy. right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's the admiral at Starfleet Academy. Yeah. He's oh. the one that uh, uh, almost kicks um, Kirk out of it. Yep. Right. Yeah, and sorry, Andrew. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just am saying I've corrected him once before and he didn't remember, so now I just have to do it every time. <laughs> so... God, I can, oh, her, Jesus Christ. <laughs> her her diplomacy with the Vidians didn't really work for me, but this one really did, um, which is weird because it's the one I feel like she has the least connection to, right? Mm. She's She doesn't have any kids. Um, she does have that dog does, back home. Yeah, she has a dog. A pregnant just, dog. Yeah, the, okay, pregnant dog. That She's never going to meet those puppies. But it, it, it just really struck me like, she knows, she, she's good at diplomacy. She knows what people want and what they need and how to find a common connection between them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After they just established the video link and gotten the Romulan dude to agree to send messages for them, or at least to try to get his government to let him send messages, Belana rushes in with her like big discovery that she thinks that they can teleport over there, and it works. It would have worked. Which is crazy. It would yeah. have worked. Can we talk about the weird lamp that they teleported first? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, what do they call it? Like a, the cylinder. a test cylinder a test or cylinder. something. Yeah, it can yeah, simulate, it like, simulate bio 
most yeah, organic so like, and inorganic compounds. So, like, was there just, like, someone's heart in there that they sent over to make sure it would still beat? <laughs> no, I'm sure it was, like, synthetic, but, like, imitating organic materials that would have, if that survived the trip, then they would extrapolate from that that they could survive, mm-hmm. like, a human could live through it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You crack that thing open, a bunch of goo comes pouring I out. don't think it was a human heart. It was, like, a step away from a lava lamp. <laughs> I know, well, yes. <laughs> Except it had organs in it, I'm sure. And then they teleport it right onto that guy's like <laughs> yeah. desk. <laughs> he's he, but like the, he sent them the coordinates, and so he's the one who was like, "I want them to send it right here, this is <laughs> right on my coffee coaster." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he did have that cool poster in the background. Like it's maybe it's just his like his crash pad, you know. Mm-hmm. Get the lava lamp going, get the lights mm-hmm. down low, smoke a little bit of Cardassian weed. Yeah, have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Some Romulan ale. <laughs> is that a thing? That's a real thing. But um, it tastes terrible. It can never taste good. Nobody ever takes a drink of alien liquid or food in Star Trek and goes, mmm, that's delicious. It's always like, oh, that's really good for diplomacy, or they just spit it right out. <laughs> well, we'll never know about Neelix's coffee, huh? Because, well, <laughs> rushed off before yeah, she could take a sip. You don't need to drink that to know. Yeah, I don't want my coffee in, like, jello form. <laughs> yeah, I prefer liquid, personally. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sarah. We-, we keep cutting you off. Oh, Romulan I'm not, ale I wasn't looks saying gross. Anything. I was finding it looks like it just looks like Kool Aid or it some does. kind. It's just light blue. Highly intoxicating. It makes me think of like a bad shot that uses uh, blue curacao. Oh, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what it makes me think of because they're in shot glasses, basically. Yeah. Yep. My first Ugh. ever shot was a shot of UV blue, which was not dissimilar from that. Elabor- elaborate. It was well, a I, high school party, and it was a double shot glass, and it was more alcohol than I'd consumed in my entire life up to that point in a single glass. <laughs> it was awful. Good night, no. though. I think <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> it could have been. Don't take a shot of vodka that comes out of a plastic bottle. That's my advice for our listeners. Uh, I think yeah. that's good advice. I think that's yeah. sound uh, sound advice for anyone, especially when you're 17. Yeah. Oof. So they, it does work. Like the teleport, the transporter, they do get it to work. But since the Romulan dude is like, you can't come on my ship, but I can come to your ship because of politics. I think it was uh, just too small. No, it was It was because he wasn't wasn't allowed to have Starfleet people on his ship. He, oh, the he, impression that I got from it was that he was just on a like a really small ship. He was by himself on this small boat, and there wasn't enough room really for anybody else to come over. That's weird no. because no, he explicitly like... said <laughs> he explicitly said I can't have Starfleet members on my ship on a science vessel. Uh, I right. think I was taking notes at that point. Yeah, so I think I <laughs> yeah, think there it, is they were like basic... top secret stuff. Yeah, I think they were talking or that he was talking about you know having actual like armed ships being right flown out to that area to teleport onto. Yeah. So I guess it could have been both, but he only I I only heard him say the part about Starfleet right. <laughs> yeah. not being allowed on his ship. But so they get him over on the ship and they figure out that he's from twenty years in the past. Yeah, that was the big twist. It was a rift in yeah. both space cool. and time. Um, yeah. So he yeah. So if they would have gone back, they would have been twenty years in the past. I was right. I both liked this like twist to it and also was a little annoyed because this was our third time travel thing in six episodes. Six episodes. <laughs> <laughs> like half the episodes at this point are time travel and Yeah. But at the same time a it was a very This yeah. is like good time travel, not stupid time travel like the other one. Yeah. yeah. Right. This was a satisfying like, oh, that makes a lot of sense why they can't do this now. Yeah, this one was actually, like, had an emotional impact. Right. Mm -hmm. I wish they had spent a little bit more time exploring, because they decided that they're not going to go over there, strictly because they don't want to ruin the timeline, which Mm -hmm. I know is, like, a super big uh, Trek trope by this point, Mm -hmm. but, like, it's this really interesting dichotomy between, like, acting selflessly for a pretty abstract idea Mm -hmm. versus acting selfishly to save yourself right now. And I, I really... They didn't talk about it that much. They just sort of right away decided they were going to do the selfless thing and move on from there. And I wish they'd explored that topic a little bit more because they could they could have saved themselves. And they didn't just because 
it was the right thing to do. I, I wanted a little bit more there. It, it would have been better if it were a little flesh, more fleshed out, but like I think that they're weighing like look at the opportunity that we have here like in the time that we've been here like we've been able to do good here we've been able to like do research and gather you know information about delta quadrant that you know people don't have not that that's you know necessarily worth being stuck out there for 75 years or whatever but like it's a nice way to pass the time there's there's impact of them being there that would be gone if they went back and that kind of like it has similar impact to like what we talked about in was it episode three where they ended up not destroying the planet and like it was like that whole everything that happened was erased it would be a similar thing to that where it's like them not wanting to erase the impact of what they were doing there or have done when they were there well, I think that if they had gone back, they wouldn't have erased any of the things that happened when they, when they were out in the Delta Corner, I don't think. I mean, this is like paradox territory, so it's kind of confusing. But if they had brought a ship that's 20 years technologically more advanced than the stuff they would have been going back to, then that would have changed the course of the entire thing. Because they felt like they were going to be like, well, if we go back... Then we can sit around for 20 years instead of 75 years flying back. Mm -hmm. And then we can go back to like interact with people. Like they wouldn't have done that. Harry Kim can babysit for himself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But like the thing that they, the more tempting thing that they, I think should have made a bigger deal about was the fact that the Romulan dude was like, so I could just tell Starfleet not to send your ship out. Right. When you Mm -hmm. go off on this mission that has you ending up up in the delta quadrant mm-hmm. yeah and they don't even like act tempted by that i mean except for harry who's sitting there being the petulant baby who's like let's just go back let's just go back right. and they're like that's when i think tom was like you'd be two years old right <laughs> when we went back and but like chicote just immediately says something like well we've already had a big impact on the quadrant here so we sh- we can't do that either and he's just like and everyone's just like yeah you're right Right. It's like I, that's what I think should have been a bigger dilemma for them. Yeah. I, well, yeah. I guess the other question too is like again back to how long have they been there? Like how much of an impact would they have had in right. a couple weeks, presumably? Right. Maybe right. A, a couple months at most. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. they saved that entire planet from blowing themselves up. Mm-hmm. So. Well, no, because they had caused it. Oh well, that's true. So that they, they so would have been fine. Yeah. Yeah, that planet would have been fine. So here's the here's the thing though: if they had never gone out, then they would never have known that any of those things were happening. Right. Yeah. Like, was rejecting the offer the right thing to do? Well, that's the question I have. I was gonna pose to you guys: is what would your opinion have been if you were in that situation? Would you want to go back twenty years? Would you have gone the sending the message Starfleet route? Like, what what would your? I would be really conflicted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a big because, decision. Anyway, you slice it. Yeah. Because, like, I think I would have wanted to go back. And then I would have just been like, I swear I won't talk to anyone about any of this. Mm-hmm. And it'll just be a secret. And then I won't go interact with, you know. But then, like, the next time you see the people that you're, you're, that you know, you're 20 years older. And mm-hmm. then I guess at that point, you can tell them mm-hmm. <laughs> what happened. But. Yeah, but you're always going to be time shifted from them, right? It's not like you get to go back and resume where your relationships left right. off. You're, those relationships right, right. are over forever. Yeah, you're not going to go back to normalcy, and you're not going to go back to you know how it was with your like friends and family that you want to go right. back to. Yeah, right. it would be such that a weird is, situation. That's true, but like you would also be safe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you would be in a place that's not strange and terrifying and just uncharted yeah so i mean but i guess the people that are on this ship already signed up for this life of adventure and so it's part it comes with the territory i guess so i mean i don't know is what i'm saying i would argue that the show thinks that they made the wrong choice um because when they find out that um remor was was killed, right? Like they mm-hmm. immediately get punished for making the, that choice. Right. Like, yeah, they, they leave it a little ambiguous, but it, it seemed pretty clear to me that, um, their messages never got sent and nobody still, nobody knows about it. They made the selfless right. choice. They helped 
they did whatever they could, and then it all amounted to their one lifeline getting killed. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed a little bit more ambiguous to me, like, you know, maybe he left a will. They said that at one point. Or but like, it's also the future. They could have set yeah. up a thing to auto send at, yeah. on a specific date, yeah. which is what I think yeah. would have made sense. But See, Yeah, but those are all Bolana's explanations, and she seems so desperate and so reaching in that moment. It felt it does, like it was the show saying, but, none of this happened. It's just them trying to make themselves feel better about something terrible that happened. Yeah. yeah. I don't necessarily yeah. think it was punishing. I think it was pretty real to the moment. Like, you literally don't have an idea. Like, it, they very well could, but you have literal no way of knowing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's, like, up to, to them to decide what they're going to believe about that. I mean, I guess either way, they don't, it doesn't affect anything that they're actually doing, like their actions. Like, it's just for their own peace of mind. Yeah. So I, I, do you think, I can't remember if they said this, do you think they told the crew that about how he was actually like died before he could have been able to send the messages? Uh, I don't think so. That would have been such a killer. Just the people in that room know. Yeah, just just the the bridge. bridge. Yeah. And there, it's. Because if you tell people, like, hey, those messages we just sent out never actually got sent out, that would be such a killer. Yeah. It, like, they it really would, but that in that one really day, un- unlike these Starfleet officers to just like bury that information to, yeah, it, like in one day, they would go from having a chance of being teleported back to the or transported back to the Alpha Quadrant and then. Also, that that's ruined on top of, you know, the messages they sent out also don't get sent out. Yeah. It, it would just be blow after blow there. And I think they yeah. were probably tr- just trying to spare them at the moment. They may, it might be the kind of thing where they would share it later on. But... Yeah. Yeah. Maybe at a later point. I feel like they are in this mindset of they really are all in this together, you know, both commanding officers and crew alike so i feel like they would at some point share that information i would love to see the crew reckon with that knowledge Mm -hmm. yeah uh so my actor fun fact this episode is about telecremor uh so the actor is vaughn armstrong vaughn Uh, armstrong yeah vaughn armstrong holy shit okay He's honestly most known for working on Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> uh, he's been on Voyager, obviously, Deep Space Nine, Next Generation, and what he's most well known for, Enterprise, where he was hmm. Admiral Maxwell Forrest. <laughs> there are a lot of actors like that yeah. who yeah. just kind of pop up as, like, the guy who played Tuvok was on Next Generation. Mm-hmm. And Paris, the guy, Paris is the also guy, on Next Generation. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, the guy who plays Neelix was a Ferengi in an episode. I liked a lot how the, um, the, the 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 contact media got more and more personal. They went from being only to do voice all the way to being in person mm-hmm. as their relationship changed. So the closer that uh, Janeway and Ramor get like emotionally, the closer they get physically in space. They mm-hmm. start out like not having any connection at all. And then by the end of the episode, they are in the same room together, sharing like a lot of fairly personal stuff. I, I just thought that was a nice little bit of, of writerly flair. Yeah, for sure. That is, that is super cool. I didn't think about that. So the Dr. B plot. Yeah. I, that was, I was, Excited that they kind of got into the discussion of the humanity of the Doctor. Um, mm-hmm. Totally. Being that he's, quote unquote, just a hologram in Janeway's words. But it's like interesting that they're playing with that concept of, you know, Kess viewing him as part of the crew. And like, you know, she, she has the line where he's talking about like he's he's alive, he's self-aware, he's communicative, he can learn. Yeah. And just because he's a hologram, does that mean he doesn't deserve to be treated with respect or any consideration? Like, yeah, right. It was a very, it was a very good kiss moment, which we haven't really had yet. Wait, you didn't think her wanting to have a kiss in the middle of a nebula was a good kiss moment? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then in turn, Janeway taking that and like 
giving that the due consideration to like go talk to the doctor and talk about like giving him some giving him some like autonomy of himself like with being able to control being turned on and off when he would want and yeah not being turned off like in the middle of trying to do a culture to see if someone has the flu and things like that yeah (laughs) it was the first time that someone had treated or even considered the doctor as anything more than a tool to treat a medical injury with right yep and they really i feel like locked that one home with the final quote of the episode uh, what he says, something of a personal nature. I want a name. Like that's mm-hmm. that was really good. Best quote of the yeah. episode, right there. I was I was very excited to know that he's going to get a name. Do you something. guys have <laughs> oh. guesses for a name for the doctor? Nay, do you know? I don't. I do okay. not know. So he does get a name besides just the doctor. Hmm. Oh. Um. Yeah. George. <laughs> Neelix two. Oh my god! Okay, real guess. What's your real guess? I, I don't have three. one right now. <laughs> Gunderson. <laughs> Gunderson. It's a powerful, powerful name for a powerful doctor. House. I think he goes by the name House. <laughs> no. Okay. House Doctorson. <laughs> no, George. George was my real guess. I don't know. It just seems appropriate for some reason. Okay. It does. It does feel like they'll go for some just. N- quote unquote guy. normal name like Robert Mark <laughs> well I'm not going to say anything Chip I would like to call out one more element of the B plot here um, everyone come with me I'd like you ta- to take you to the captain's dining room where mm-hmm. we are all going to have a nice warm drink of veggie bullion okay and <laughs> that that's the one you're going to go about. The weird one? That was the weird one to you? Spinach soup with pear. Spinach juice with pear. Oh. Why? No, it was a smoothie. I'm okay with a smoothie. That's I'm disgusting. not okay with somebody drinking veggie stock. It was not a smoothie. It <laughs> Drink, was like a, it was prepared it like was a, a cocktail. It was a shot glass. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll say Cass is an alien. Tom Paris is apparently an alien with his taste buds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The but, more important but, thing here is that Tom Paris has shit taste again. <laughs> that's not true. Like, Look at Harry Kim. Although. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. That, on board with that one. He Wait, does okay, not know said, how to taste was, food. They said juice? Because I could have sworn they said juice. soup. Nope. But Spinach juice. She was going to have a big juice? old cup of juice with pear. I, I definitely heard soup first. I th- I'm Jane, pretty sure Janeway said ve- vegetable soup. Yep. She Janeway said, said no, she, she said was vegetable vegetable, vegetable bullion because she says it bullion in like this really <laughs> affected <laughs> way. Mm-hmm. But I then a thousand percent just sure veggie stock. Spinach it, juice. How was that worse than than the captain of a starship drinking water that had old vegetable parts <laughs> boiled in it? <laughs> How is that worse than people who drink water that's had old animal parts boiled in it? It's not. They're both terrible. <laughs> I, I'm willing to forgive the soup. People sipping on broth is a real thing. Mm-hmm. That's fine. The spinach juice with pear just sounds like it tastes disgusting. Mm-hmm. The pear is yeah. really quite, quite a twist there. Like, oh my god, pear, Tom Paris can't give anybody food advice no. is what it's coming down to. He studied in France. Why doesn't he have any knowledge of food? What? Yeah. It's upsetting. Like I well, hate that's Tom Paris. The podcast because we've been recording for almost an hour. <laughs> yep. Well, well, we talked about another Voyager. show. We talked about another show. It's okay. There's hardly anything to talk about with Adventure Time. <laughs> I, mean, I don't I know. I felt like we went <laughs> yeah. longer on this one because it it felt like the first one to me where I was actually like truly invested in the stakes. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Same. So I feel like I just generally had a lot more to say about this episode. Yeah. Uh, the Adventure Time episodes were fun, like fun though. They were just so light and not. There's nothing to them. Really, I watched these back to back. Like I went straight from the end of Voyager right into the Wizard, and the tonal shift almost broke my neck. Yeah, it was <laughs> such whiplash. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's an interesting question. Do you guys? I normally watch all three in a row. I, I go do usually too. I, yeah. I go Voyager, Adventure Time, Adventure Time. Yeah. So do you, yeah. Okay, so I guess Andrew's I, the odd one out there, I, but that makes sense. Yeah, I usually watch them a day or two apart. Yeah, the uh, the tonal shift of like wondering whether or not it's uh, a moral choice to prevent yourself from going on a mission back in time to, hey kid, eat a broom, 
<laughs> oh, you've got me- <laughs> you've got mayo powers now. Dustomancy. Like, wi- the wizard episode was just basically like like here's some fr- uh, shitty frat hazing that people might have done <laughs> in like at some point. I don't know. It was just like it was so bad. They were dumb jokes that like got to a point where it was like, okay, this is kind of funny, but there was nothing to it. There was the portal that had a bunch of eyes in the front and a bunch of butts in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) That was important. So uh, Finn and Jake are tricked into getting magical powers. They get more and more until eventually they realize the whole point was to have them be strapped up in the top of a building where they use those powers to prevent an asteroid from destroying a village. And then they break free and move the village with the help of the other wizards. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. And they are accumulating these magic powers over time by doing different um, tasks, I guess. <laughs> like, third, yeah, ra- like, third rate hazing rituals, like. Eat, okay. Well, I mean, some of them, um, like they eat a broom. Yep, I'm gonna go through. That's... I'm gonna go through these hit by hit. The task okay, to okay. The, yes. to the to the magic reward. So, okay. <laughs> first task to get your earn your first magic star, eat these brooms. You get. Dustomancy. You can you can control dust now. That's it. <laughs> and know what they're feeling and thinking, right? <laughs> yep. This this moat is very unhappy in his marriage. <laughs> um that that had me get laughing pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Followed by put your hand in these bowl of eyeballs, which are peeled grapes. <laughs> to get No, they're eyeballs. No, they're eyeballs. Um <laughs> to get shadow shadow surrey, which you know, controlling shadows checks out. Mm-hmm. Um, followed by balance this pencil on your lips to get magic hair powers. Control your hair and stuff. I guess make them grow real long. <laughs> Spin some coins on the ground. You can now conjure mayo, and they eat a, 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 they they drink a terrible it. amount, a terrible amount of mayo. And then they did a few uh, few tasks in a row, followed by a few. Uh, few powers in a row the first one being uh flip a hammer um put an orange slice in your mouth and then balance on two legs of a chair by which then they get magic wings uh sword hands it can shoot fireworks and most importantly the sleep spell which was the first one i'm like oh yes that would be good that would be a good one to have you mean you don't (laughs) want to be able to summon mayo whenever you want i do It, it would make sandwiches easier have you ever had a mayo sandwich before? I've had mayo on sandwich. <laughs> Have you ever had just, a mayo sandwich before? Just like two pieces of bread and mayonnaise. Have you? <laughs> of course. It's delicious. <laughs> it's deeply upsetting. Hey, Sa- hey, Sarah and Nate, can we have a little conversation over in the corner <laughs> without the Andrew? Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I'm really yeah. concerned about Andrew's taste. Yeah, I'm really kind of worried about that thing that he just said about mayonnaise. Sandwiches. That was that was really gross. I'm not sure I can be on the podcast with him anymore. That's so much mayo. Just it's just wet bread at that point. <laughs> I feel like I need to explain myself, but there's no way for me to do it without coming across like a bougie asshole. But no, I make, explain. I make my own mayo, and it's delicious. I eat it by the spoonful. <laughs> okay, now I'm more upset. Can we? Go it's off to the so side again. Good. Can we go off to the side? Andrew, Andrew, I need you to take okay. a step out of the room real quick. We're going to step back into the corner here. He's taking a spoonful of mayo now. This is not even <laughs> bread. It's not even bread anymore. That's not food by itself. No, it's not. That's a condiment. Ugh. It's like drinking ketchup. Who would do that? Or vegetable stock. <laughs> Andrew, you are not supposed to be in the room okay, right okay, now. Okay, okay, okay. What? How do you make... What do you put in it that makes it so amazing? It actually is pretty good homemade mayo. I don't do it, but I love it. You know, it's yeah. Uh, the few times I've good. made mayo at home, it's really good. The secret is four egg yolks in addition to the one egg you put in there and just a fuckload of garlic. Mm-hmm. So it's just garlic and egg. Motherfucker, that's an aioli. No, see, because then you add more garlic to it and it's a, an aioli. You put in three cloves. You put, you put three cloves of garlic into three cups of mayo that's just good mayo you mm-hmm. put like a whole head of garlic into it that's an aioli okay i know what i said i've i have, Can we talk <laughs> about I have no the fact about that the garlic. wizard is a bunch of tadpoles that live in a frog's throat that you can see through yeah yeah that, 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 origi- that originally sell as they're talking like 
as one, but they are all individually talking. Yeah, yeah as one yes. of the ones talking out of a sink. When they don't talk, when we don't talk together, they can't understand us. Yeah, that was that made me laugh. Yeah, that was that was very so good. good. Uh, also, the Reaper at the beginning of the episode, who was like, "Hey, kid, want some magic powers?" Uh, mm-hmm. I thought that was Mark Hamill at first because you know I, I too. thought his too. voice was familiar too, and I looked it up. And it's, I was like, John, it's just John DiMaggio again. <laughs> yeah. Wow! I like that the keychain was just his arm, the keychain that he was getting. Yeah, yeah he like throwing, rips it off, throwing it with the deal. I would, I totally would have bought that it was Mark Hamill still. Like totally, it was, it was very similar to his Joker voice. So my big qualm with this episode is these are you know this Bufo the Wizard and they have all these magic powers now. Their solution for suspending them to like put beams into this portal to stop the asteroid or whatever is like ropes and pulleys under their like putting yeah. the ropes under their arms to suspend them. Well, you can't waste your magic power on oh, suspending gotta... them in the air. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, you have right. to funnel it into the asteroid. <laughs> repelling <laughs> come on think about this under their, the two ropes under their arms suspending them up there yeah it was, it was funny and then he like just it. takes the, the one that he replaces with finn going up there is just he just like takes him out to the grave he's like yeah. you, go, you can be dead now <laughs> now you can die yeah a coffin ready for him too yeah yeah I also liked uh, when Finn was like, you know what? I don't want to do this. He like stands up and goes, youth culture forever. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thinking will get us all killed. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a silly, fun episode. It like, was silly and with, fun, like, but mo- like half, when half the episode is just a montage of magic powers, it's like, yeah, there's not going to be like a terrible amount a of substance to, to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, it's kind of the same issue with the next episode. Uh so yeah, evicted a big montage in that one too. Yeah. So evicted. Uh, in this one, Jake is telling Finn a horror, like a spooky story, uh, at nighttime in their house about vampires, and Finn gets real spooked, real bad by it, and has a hard time sleeping. A- an actual vampire shows up and tells them that this is her house. Uh, kicks them out. And they travel across the land trying to find new houses. And a couple of different times, they find out that Marceline, the vampire who took their first house, had been there first and was claiming this one too. Eventually, Finn punches her good one time, and she's like, you know what, you can have the first one back. I love Marceline, but this is not my favorite episode with her in it. No, it's, no but it's I feel like, like a... they needed like an introduction episode like that anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. She is vi- she's so chill at the same time as being a vampire. Terrifying. <laughs> Spooky, <laughs> but I, scary. I love the fact that they they sell this the, the vampire sucking is just for the color. I did yeah. like that. That was fun. That is yeah, a really fun a twist, which is not what I expected, I guess. <laughs> yeah. My favorite part of this was where uh, Jake gets really scared and falls on his back and screams. Like, that scream cracks me up every time. Even my wife, who doesn't like Adventure Time, thought that was hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I wasn't scared. I was just singing my scream song. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of songs, that house hunting song was so good. It was a, It was a good song. It kind of came out of nowhere. It didn't deserve to be as good as it was, but it was so good. (laughs) On the other hand, though, when Marceline was singing, also very good, but that one Mm -hmm. did deserve it because Marceline Mm -hmm. is dope like that. Yeah, she sings a lot more later, and she's Mm -hmm. she's really great. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Olivia Olsen is both her speaking and singing voice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, My Um, favorite part from the... Pat is, I think, an animator on it. Maybe he's the showrunner... Uh, anyway, he did the singing for that song, uh, and he tried to do it in like a Blink One Eighty Two style. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part from that house hunting song was the the mean cloud man and his beautiful cloud bride. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed the farting planets. This this yeah. show is totally butt obsessed, and I don't know why. I know, even <laughs> during the fight, there's the the there's always a butt. The, the the butt slap. In her yeah. form. <laughs> Should we just start yeah, this... getting a, a like count of butts per episode? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to total up <laughs> yeah. all the butts? I'll total up uh, Voyager photon torpedoes, mm-hmm. and I will total up the uh, butt tally. adventure time butts. Mm-hmm. Speaking butt of tally. which, speaking of which, Andrew, I have not gotten a photon torpedo update. 
Uh, he, he didn't. Said I said it right at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> I wasn't listening. I was very <laughs> appreciative of that. Yes. Two of 38. I don't really have much more to say about this. I was really stressed out when uh, Jake's viola was sitting out in the rain. It, it, like I said, it was a light episode. Yes. I need some explanation on the worms in this episode. <laughs> yeah. That, well, okay, so when they got back to the house... And after Marceline lets them have it, th- there's just a bunch of worms. <laughs> well, and it starts with the one. Then there's oh, like, yeah. it's like no worms, Honey no worms in the friends. bed. We've talked about this, <laughs> right? Honey. And then, and then there's the worms have taken over, and then there's like king worm, king worm who wants them to all to hug him and cast well, a and spell then, on and him. And then when they, I was like. Oh my god, it's going to do that thing where it ends and nothing is explained, uh-huh. and then that's exactly what happens. Hey, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that it ends with the king worm going, oh, yeah, hug me. Oh, yeah, hug me. <laughs> like, in just the weirdest voice. Yeah. So, are yep. we supposed to take from that that they have been taking up residence in their absence, and they just live there with them now? Or I'm going to choose to believe... Thing? I'm going to choose to believe that the, that the reason Marceline let them have the house back was because she got annoyed by the worms. With the worms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They come back in a later episode for a really upsetting, trippy episode of Adventure Time. Mm. Um, but in this one, they're just like silly worms that want hugs. Mm-hmm. Should we move on to connections? Yes, let's. Uh, I have two. Uh, the first one I have is uh, self-sacrifice for moral reasons. Um, the crew of the Voyager decides not to go back home, even though they could. Uh, just like the wizards uh, spend their entire lives preventing an asteroid from destroying a small mm-hmm. city. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Uh, mine is that Finn brought life to something, uh, aka the rock that Jake deflects the awakened <laughs> spell so to. So good. <laughs> uh, so Jake, uh, Finn tries to make wake wake Jake up so that he can help him with the asteroid problem. And uh, in his sleep, Jake reflects a spell and it hits a rock, and the rock wakes up and is horrified at his existence. <laughs> Um, so Finn brought life to something that wouldn't normally be alive, like how the doctor is alive in Star Trek. Mine is a bit lighter, but it's just with the, the, the theme of missing home in the eviction episode. Oh, very good. I also noted that, um, the doctor and Marceline are both burnt out on dealing with mortals. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. I am... Very impressed with the number of connections we've come up with. I know. I think it's easier when they're good episodes. Uh-huh. It's easier yeah. when they're good episodes, but even the ones that are weaker, we've had we've had some pretty good connections for. Um, it just turns out that these two shows are thematically linked in ways that the creators definitely intended. Right. It was by design. Oh, for sure. Oh, one more thing. Circling back to eviction. I'm assuming you all caught the... The tree trunks cameo at the house party. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, dancing in the water. Uh huh. No. Yep. She was there dancing, dancing in the cave. Nice. That went through me off so much. I thought that uh, it was an error, and this uh-huh. was being shown out of production order, like they had made it before the tree trunks episode. I still think that's the case, but yeah. Interesting. I'm betting no. I'm betting it's just the kind of thing where they're like, "Eh, tree trunks is back." Forget. It. Yeah. Who cares? It's like, fine. Yeah. She's here. It's fine. I think it's just kind of uh, the nature of the show in its current state is like they, that the episodes are so self-contained where it's just like, okay, well, it's a character right. that we can add to this group that we don't have to. Well, like, and there's lots of one. things. <laughs> there's lots of things that happen that aren't explained. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I feel like that's one thing that I have noticed. It seems like the world that they live in, there's so much going on that they're not involved in. <laughs> that. Mm-hmm. Like, things are happening all the time when they're not there. Like, the worms coming into their house and having that. Like, the worms probably could have had a whole other episode of the show Mm -hmm. (laughs) while they were gone, you know? Yeah, yeah. That is one of the interesting things that Adventure Time does later is they will do... There's one episode in particular that has Finn and Jake just as doing doing things in the background. And you follow one of those side characters that just go about their life. Mm-hmm. It's a nice little inversion of the classic formula. Yeah. That's cool. It feels like a living world. It... Even if it's a weird world, it's it's living and things are happening. It is very vibrant because there is it it doesn't have that feeling of like the show being very hyper focused on just Finn and Jake because yeah, there's so mm-hmm. much going on everywhere. 
everywhere in the background, everywhere like there's right. stuff happening in the environment. Yeah. It's it's similar to like uh in some like RPGs. Mm-hmm. The most the most interesting ones are going to be the ones where you know, you come back to a town and things have changed while you were away. Mhm. Like oh, these people actually have lives. It makes it feel real. And yep. this is a show that makes that feel real, whereas some other ones, it's like, oh, everybody just kind of stops what they're doing and pauses their existence while the, you're off doing a quest. But no, yeah. in this one, we don't get that, which is fun. You know what's funny about that? It's interesting that that's a place that Adventure Time really succeeds and Voyager does not because you get, yeah, like that background texture of the, the land of Ooh and what's going on when Finn and Jake are not around. And you don't really get that same context in Voyager with regards to them having to be the suddenly new survivalist ship and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, Voyager's got the stronger like A plots at the moment and Adventure Time has the stronger uh, like c and d plots i would say World building i guess yeah. yeah the voyager does have how many other series that have kind of done a lot of world building for them uh, that they can yeah, rely yeah. on and it's maybe a little bit of an unfair comparison because if janeway leaves her quarters and then comes back and things are different like that's an episode of the show that has to be explored you can't yeah. just let that be like oh it's a weird thing uh-huh. that'd be a great episode though <laughs> although that did kind of happen with her mess and neelix yeah Fair. That's true. Neelix is the worms. Neelix <laughs> is the worms. He does just want to be. Is happy that going to be our that... first show T-shirt? Neelix <laughs> is the worms. No, Neelix is Jar Jar is our first T-shirt. <laughs> no, yeah. we're not doing that. We can have two. The front will be a little icon of Neelix as Jar Jar, and the back will be like this big drawing of Neelix's head on a worm. <laughs> It could say Neelix gives me worms. I want to, if we have if we have merch, I want it to be stuff that people would actually buy. <laughs> I would actually buy that. I would not wear that. We'll, we'll, we'll make two t shirts and we'll, we'll just wear them. Oh yeah, you guys couldn't make your worm shirts. I I think if we if we ever made a shirt, it would have to have the closing stuff on it. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure it would. Speaking of. Speaking of, we should probably say that. Speaking of closing. <laughs> I do want to also bring up that we now have uh, both an email and a Twitter account that you can follow or send us bullshit if you really feel like it. I'm going to sort through a lot of the bullshit email. Please don't send us bullshit. Send us thoughtful comments only. <laughs> or great Star Trek or Adventure Time memes. I'm also here for that. Yeah, uh, that works. Uh, Voyager Time at gmail.com. Uh, Twitter uh, slash at Voyager Time. Uh, it's really weird how both of those were available for me yeah, to just really get. It's going to be Voyager Time everywhere because, yeah. uh, I mean, that's the great thing about our SEO now is we're obviously <laughs> like, the, we're the first results everywhere you search. So hell yeah, yeah. If somebody decides to search that, throw it in the Googles, and there we are. It's <laughs> shocking to me that this concept hasn't been done already. It truly is. These two shows that are naturally I'm, paired together. Yeah. As our connections segments have shown every week, these two shows contain so much similar DNA. They really they want to explore the same topics and they're gonna do it a lot. The viewing demographic crossover is uncanny. I mean, they, got, they got the four of us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Next week we'll be covering the Star Trek episode Ex Post Facto in the Adventure Time episodes, City of Thieves and the Witch's Garden. In the meantime, we'll just wait for you here. By the mausoleum. With our backs turned. And our defenses lowered. Come along with me and the galaxy. We got stuck in a Delta Yeah.